Good morning and a happy Christmas to you all. On this morning of mornings, we come together to celebrate because a boy has been born for us, a child has been given for us, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Once we walked in darkness, now we have seen a great light. Now, as we're not actually in church this morning, we haven't got the Advent ring for us to be able to light the Christ candle. But I have got here a white candle. And for us today, that is going to be our Christ candle, our Christ light. And I will say the words of our candle lighting liturgy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Jesus is the light of the world, a light no darkness can ever put out. We're going to sing now our Christmas verse of the Advent Candle song, Advent Candles Tell Their Story. Right. 
we're going to think about the word Christmas and the letters that make up that word and what each letter might represent this morning. So we're going to start, of course, with the letter C. And C today is going to stand for carols and Christmas presents. Carols are something I think we all enjoy singing and it's the only time of year that we really get to do it. But actually the word carol means a dance or a song of joy and they've been sung since well before Jesus was born. But you could say that the very first ever Christmas carol was sung by the angels around Bethlehem on the night of his birth when they sang glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Our songs this morning are all carols. Some are modern, some are more older, more traditional. But they're all songs of joy because today is a day of joy when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Now, C also can represent Christmas presents. And that's quite an exciting part of today, isn't it? Especially if you're a bit younger. I haven't yet opened any, but I'm looking forward to doing that with the family. But you know what? As you get older, you get more pleasure out of seeing other people open their Christmas presents. Yeah, really. <laughs> there is truly more joy in giving than receiving. Sometimes... It's hard to remember in all the present giving and receiving what today is all about and actually what the very best gift of all was and is. And that, of course, is God's gift to us, Jesus, born to save us. And that's what we're really celebrating today. We're going to hear about it now in our first reading from Luke. The Birth of Jesus About that time, Emperor Augustus gave orders for the names of all the people to be listed in record books. These first records were made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to go to their own hometown to be listed, so Joseph had to leave Nazareth in Galilee and go to Bethlehem in Judah. Long ago, Bethlehem had been King David's hometown, and Joseph went there because he was from David's family. Mary was engaged to Joseph and travelling with him to Bethlehem. She was soon going to have a baby, and while they were there, she gave birth to her firstborn son. She dressed him in baby clothes and laid him on a bed of hay, because there was no room for them in the inn. Our next letter is H. And H today is going to stand for humble and hay. Jesus is God's son. And the Bible tells us how he gave up all the glory of heaven to come to earth and be one with us. But you know, Jesus wasn't born in any royal palace or any grand place. Instead, he was born in the simplest of places, in a stable, because there was no room in the inn for them. And his bed was no luxurious cot, but a manger, a trough that was used by the animals for eating. I don't think you can get much more humble than that, to be honest. And there was no cosy mattress, no duvet cover or anything like that. There was simply some hay in the trough, in the manger, and it was on that that Jesus was laid, and he was wrapped in cloths, torn cloths, that he was swaddled in, as was the custom in that day. And that's what we're going to sing about now as we sing the Calypso carol, See Him Lying on a Bed of Straw.
our next two letters are R and I, which I'll show you in a moment. R is for reveling. Reveling is really just another word for celebrating. And at Christmas time, that is something we usually do quite a lot of. And it usually involves a lot of food. It's that time, isn't it, for the Christmas dinner. I don't know what your favourite thing is. Ours is turkey with stuffing and roast potatoes and all the trimmings. And then there's mince pies and Christmas pudding with far too much cream. And there's always chocolates and nuts out. I think sometimes we overdo it, really. Not just us either. I'm sure other families are the same. Lots of families have their own special traditions and it is good to celebrate. But sometimes I think maybe we forget about why we're celebrating. We get so caught up in all that we're doing or overdoing that we could do with reminding ourselves what the real reason for the season is and not just get caught up in all the stuff and fluff of Christmas. I stands today for innkeeper. The Bible doesn't actually mention an innkeeper, but there would have been innkeepers at every inn that Mary and Joseph called at, looking for somewhere to stay. But Bethlehem was so crowded that everywhere they went, they were turned away. In the end, one innkeeper who wanted to help them offered them the place where the animals were kept. It was pretty basic. It would have been quite smelly. In no way was it ideal, but at least it was somewhere to shelter. Perhaps we should ask ourselves, am I the sort of person who would close the door of my heart on Jesus and the message of God's love come in him? Or am I like the innkeeper who found room for it? A Christian writer called Roy L. Smith once wrote, He who has not Christmas in his heart will never find it under a tree. Bit of a pause for thought, that one, isn't it? We're going to think a little bit more about it as we pray now. So let us pray. Jesus, Emmanuel, coming to us naked and vulnerable. Jesus, God with us, risk taker, then and now. Jesus asks us to give him space in our lives and risks us saying, sorry, no room. Jesus asks us to leave behind things that give us security and risks us saying, I have too much to leave. Jesus asks us to be willing to suffer with him and risks us saying, I don't know you, when we panic and run away. Jesus risked everything for us, loved us, suffered for us, died and rose again. Will we trust him? Will we follow him? Risk and faith letting go, becoming vulnerable. Where will it lead? Will we allow our plans to die? Trusting that God's plans will bring resurrection from the grave. Amen. Please join with me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory 
for ever and ever. Amen. It was on a starry night When the hills were bright Earthly sleeping Sleeping calm and still Then in a cattle shed In a manger bed A boy was born King of all the world The Shepherds That night, in the fields near Bethlehem, some shepherds were guarding their sheep. All at once an angel came down to them from the Lord, and the brightness of the Lord's glory flashed around them. The shepherds were frightened. But the angel said, Don't be afraid. I have good news for you which will make everyone happy. This very day in King David's town a Saviour was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. You will know who he is because you will find him dressed in baby clothes and lying on a bed of hay. Suddenly many other angels came down from heaven and they joined in praising God. They said, Praise God in heaven! Peace on earth to everyone who pleases God! After the angels had left and gone back to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told us about. They hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph, and they saw the baby lying on a bed of hay. When the shepherds saw Jesus, they told his parents what the angel had said about him. Everyone listened and was surprised. But Mary kept thinking about all this and wondering what it meant. As the shepherds returned to their sheep, 
They were praising God and saying wonderful things about him. Everything they had seen and heard was just as the angel had said. Well, if you're keeping up with the spelling, you'll know that our next letter is the letter S. And after the reading we've just had, there's no prizes for guessing that this stands for shepherds. Shepherds out in the fields were considered unclean according to the Mosaic law, the law of Moses, by which the Jewish people abided. That's because they were in constant contact with animals, including sometimes dead animals. They were not able to keep themselves physically clean whilst they were out there sleeping rough. But more importantly, they weren't able to be kept spiritually clean. They weren't able to leave their flocks and come down to worship at the synagogues or at the temple. And so they were looked down on. They were considered low. And yet it is to these low people, to these blue collar workers, to these rough guys sleeping out, that the angel first appears to share the news that a special baby, God's son, has been born. It's to them that the heavenly hosts sing and they hear the praises of the angels. It's they who rush down to Bethlehem, doing what they would never do in any other circumstances, leaving their sheep behind unguarded. But they're so excited by the news. The good news of Jesus is for everyone. That's something that Luke, when he wrote his gospel, was at pains to tell us. And it's something that reminds us as well that we shouldn't judge people by appearances or from any preconceived ideas that we might have about them because of their jobs or lack of employment, because of their status or lack of it, or because of their way of life. It may well be that those whom we consider the lowest of the low, are the ones where God is most present in their lives. T is for Thanksgiving. And if I could hold up all the letters that we've done so far, you would see that they spell the name Christ. And that's what God's gift is to us that we remember today, although the gift is not only today, but always. And that is something to be truly thankful for. Not once upon a single time, not once within a single place, but now for every time and place, the truth of Christmas is born and lives. And Christmas fills the earth. Thanks be to God. Amen. M is for Mary. I wonder how Mary felt when she was pregnant. Imagine being told by an angel that you are to be the mother of the Son of God. Who's going to believe you when you tell them? I'm sure her parents blamed Joseph, and Joseph must have suspected that she'd been seeing another man. It must have been so hard for her. In the event, Joseph did believe her after an angel visited him in a dream. But that wasn't the end of the difficulties for Mary. There was that long journey to Bethlehem, giving birth in an outhouse having then to flee as a refugee to another country, and much later seeing her son crucified. She didn't know any of that at the time, of course, but I suspect that her answer to God would have been just the same. Though she didn't understand why God had chosen her, 
she was willing to say yes. Can we trust God in our lives and be willing to give our yes when he asks us to trust and obey? Can we be like Mary? That's something we're going to bring before God in prayer now. Lord God, you call us to give our yes to you in so many ways. May the worship we've shared this Christmas lead to acts of service which transform people's lives. May the carols we have sung help others to sing, even in their sadness. May the gifts we exchange today deepen our spirit of giving throughout the year. May the candles we have lit this Christmas remind us that you intend no one to live in darkness. May the new people we meet remind us that we see your image in the faces of strangers. May the gathering of family and friends help us appreciate once more the gift of loved ones. And may the stories we tell this Christmas be stories of good news, of great joy to us and all people, on our lips and in our lives. For you are our life, our light and our salvation, this Christmas and always, because of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.
So we come now to our last two letters. And the first of those is A, which stands for angels. Angels seem to occur a lot in the Christmas story. Gabriel appears to Mary. Joseph is visited by an angel in his dreams several times. And then an angel appears to the shepherds on the hillside, followed by a whole host of them singing praises to God in the sky above. It seems like whenever an angel appears, the first sentence is always, don't be afraid. Although I'm sure we all would if we saw an angel like that. I wonder though if we do see angels. Not as we might picture them because of the images we've seen in art, as tall beings dressed in white, shining with wings, but simply as people who appear at a time when we really need them, a time when we perhaps are afraid, and them coming is what makes the difference for us. There's an Advent hymn called There's a Light Upon the Mountains, and in it there's a verse which talks about God's angels here on earth being human and not the shining host above. So perhaps there are ways in which we can all be angels to others, that we can come into their lives, that we can help and that we can bring a message, a message of hope to them and the message of God's love to them. Which brings us to our last letter, another S, but it's not shepherds this time, it's sharing, sharing the good news. The role of an angel is always to be a messenger. And that's something that we need to be as well. You know, when we have good news, we can't wait to share it normally, can we? We can't wait to celebrate. We just want to go out there and announce that this wonderful thing has happened, whatever it might be. It might be that you've just received the most fantastic present ever, or maybe your team has finally had a win after a long line of defeats, or perhaps someone's just asked you to marry them, or you've been offered a new job, or you've passed your driving test, or your exams. Maybe you've had a baby, or a grandchild, and you just can't wait to tell everyone. Good news is for sharing. We're not supposed to keep it to ourselves, at least not for long. And what better news could there be than the news of Christmas? Because what does Christmas tell us? It tells us that God loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to be born as one of us, to live among us, to teach us, to love us, to die for us and to rise again. There can be no better news for sharing and nothing, no message that can be so needed to be heard. God wants everyone to know about Christmas and the real reason for it. So let's get out there and share the news. And that's what our last carol is all about. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born.
flocks by night Behold throughout the heavens That shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain blessing. Go out and share the good news with everyone you meet. Be a light for the world. Shine in the darkness. Go in the name of Jesus Christ, the real reason for the season. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.